Hi everyone, my name is Olivier and welcome to my channel. Today I've got my first vintage fountain pen review for you and we're going to be going over the Schaefer Tuckaway. I'm choosing the Schaefer Tuckaway as my first review because it was actually my first vintage fountain pen. And I've actually got two of them to show you, uh, a little green one and a brown one. Both of these were purchased on eBay and then sent to Stacy Hills at uh, Paper Wants a Pen where he restored the filling systems and polished them up really nicely. In this video, we're going to be going over some history of these cool little pens, an overview of their features, a writing sample, as well as my opinions on them as a whole, and whether or not you should get one. All right, let's get into some history. The Schaefer Tuckaway was first introduced in 1940 as a clipless, gold-filled pen intended for a man's vest pocket or a woman's purse. After World War II ended in 1945, the Tuckaway got its iconic clasp, a tiny spring-loaded pocket clip. This is often thought to be a military-style clip, but it's mounted too far down on the cap to meet that regulation. Here it is compared to an actual Schaefer military clip. The Tuckaway was retired in 1950, with the last series of models being made of solid plastic with touchdown filling systems. Overall, there are dozens of Tuckaways to collect, each more beautiful than the last. Now I'd like to go over some of the key elements to the Schaefer Tuckaway. Um, they're pretty similar in both of these, so I'm just going to show you the golden brown for now. So first up, you got the cap. It opens in about almost half a turn there. Um, this one's got this pretty wide cap band here. Um, and then of course the little clip and a white dot, which was Schaefer's kind of trademark. The section is partially transparent. So you can actually see the ink level when it's full. This one is empty, but I'll, I'll show you in a second when it's filled. To fill this, um, it's a vacuum filler. So what you're going to do is you're going to twist this knob here at the back and pull. Then you're going to open your ink bottle, dip the pen all the way in, and you'll hear a little snap as you press the piston down. And here's a close-up of the Triumph nib. What's cool about these is that the tip is slightly upturned, which gives it a really nice, smooth experience. Now I'm going to be doing a size comparison between a couple of different pens and the Tuckaway. So here's the Tuckaway next to a six inch ruler. It comes in at about four and a quarter inches long, which is by any means a pretty small pen. Next is an Esterbrook J, which is one of the more common vintage pens you'll see around. These are pretty small as well, but still just a hair longer. Put those little jewels on there. Next, you got a Pelican M400 White Tortoise. This is a more modern pen. Definitely a small pen, but still bigger than both of these guys. For a pretty universal comparison. Here's a Lamy Safari, which pretty much dwarfs that tiny little pen, and a Lamy Dialogue 3. So if you just look at the comparison between this pen and a Safari, it's pretty clear that these are definitely not big pens. All right, time for the writing sample. First up, we've got the Marine Green Celluloid Tuckaway. It's a vacuum filled pen and it has a beautiful two toned solid 14 karat gold semi flex nib. The ink I'm using today is Pelican's 2018 Ink of the Year Olivine. This nib, while pretty springy, is definitely not full flex. It's expressive though, and I definitely say more so than any modern flex pen. It's pretty dry normally, but when you flex it, it definitely puts a lot of ink down. I'd call it a fine by vintage standards, extra fine by modern ones. This pen is definitely capable of producing some beautiful letters, which I hope to be able to do someday, but until then, it's a lot of fun.
Next up, we've got the Golden Brown Schaefer Tuckaway. While it is also a vacuum filler, the nib is a conical 14 karat gold Triumph nib with a smooth stub tip. The ink is also Pelican. It's their Ink of the Year 2017 Smoky Quartz. This nib is a favorite of mine. It's super smooth and super inky, but you still get that great line variation from the square shape of the nib's tipping. It is definitely very wet though, even with this dry ink. I mostly write in these kind of chunky block letters like you're seeing here, and that it definitely does well. However, where this nib really shines is in cursive, where it could elevate even the sloppiest of handwriting. All right, and now for my opinion on the Schaefer Tuckaway. So, like I said earlier, the Schaefer Tuckaway was my first vintage pen, and by that logic, I should hate it because it's caused me to indirectly spend way too much money on vintage pens, frankly. But that's because it is a beautiful, spectacularly well-made pen that writes really, really nicely. The one thing I don't particularly like is how small it is. I do have pretty large hands, but when you post it, it is fairly comfortable. I love the filling system, even though it can be a little bit tricky to restore, but when it's working perfectly, it holds way more ink than you would think would fit in this tiny little pen. I did collect these for a while. I actually had 10 at some point, and as soon as I realized that I wasn't going to find fancy nibs on all of them like I did on these, I progressively sold them until I just had these two pretty special pens left. Although I did end up selling off a lot of them, I would recommend everyone to at least try out a tech away. Because there are so many different colors and form factors, nibs of different sizes and shapes, there's pretty much something for everyone, even if you do have big hands, but especially if you have small hands. They are decently inexpensive. I paid $40 on eBay for the pen, and then it was $50 to get it restored, which, you know, $90 for a pen is, you know, outside of pen people, that's ridiculous, but for a vacuum filler with a 14 karat gold nib that works really, really nicely, I can't fault that. That's like, you know, you could spend that much and get a pen with a steel nib that's come off an assembly line two minutes ago, but this is from just after World War II. There's a lot of history in here, and that's what I really appreciate about vintage pens in general. Plus the fact that I can just, you know, clip this to my shirt really easily, or just like a pocket if I had one. Overall, they're adorable. I, if I could, I would still have all 12 of them, but it just didn't make sense. Definitely recommend you try one out though. Anyway, thank you for watching if you got this far, I really appreciate it. Um, this is my first video, so I'm just still trying this out. Um, if you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. It would definitely, you know, get me to keep making more videos. Um, if you've got any suggestions, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, and leave a like if you liked it. Why not? If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. That's fine too. I just want to know what you guys think. Alright, thanks again. I've had a great time and uh, have a good one.